gonna lose one more, one more clip here. Um, oh, number one thing keeping you broke. This is about car payments. This has got your favorite, Rachel Cruz and Jade Warshaw again because once again, she's Don't just the show, Jade. she's just so good at giving away the game. We uh, we love to do some like reaction videos, right? On yeah. TikTok, Instagram, there's always some fun money uh, videos out there that we see, and sometimes. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes before the show, we're like, oh, I'll do a quick watch. Or one of us sees it and finds it before the show to play it. But this clip, James came in during the break, and we have not seen. I'm scared. And he's like, I really want you to see this clip live on the show. And I'm so we scared said, of what we might find. We said, okay, we are brave, courageous women, Jade. We can do this. But, uh, so we just heard it's about car loans. So that's all we know. All right, James, play the video. Sir, what is your car payment? Uh, mine is thirteen twenty-five. And what kind of vehicle is that? It's a twenty-two Ford Raptor. Okay. You have another payment? I do actually. My wife's hers is a thousand. It's a twenty-two Ford Expedition. Hey, ma'am. What is your car payment? Thirteen eighty-six. And what kind of car requires a thirteen hundred eighty-six dollar payment? Grand Wagoneer Series 3. Hey, sir, what is your car payment? I got a couple of them, but the first one's fourteen forty-five. What kind of car is that? That's a new GMC Sierra 2500 Denali. Holy sir. crap. Uh, so a white body 250, so that's 1161. Okay, so... Okay, well, I think those car payments are bonkers myself, so they, I they are going to say these are insane car payments. What? I mean, I live in New York City, and uh, that's a lot of people's rent here. I mean, not even live in the really uppity apartments by yourself or whatever, but like, yeah. that's... Well, I've got two comments. One. Don't they look like they're on a 90s sitcom? What is with the the jean jacket and the red coat thing here? What what the hell is going on there? The hoop earrings and the big... Uh, oh, my God. I feel like I'm on an episode of Martin. Anyway, okay. <laughs> so that was my first comment. I want to throw out there. I kept wondering what on earth she was writing down. Every time they said how much they made for a car payment, she was writing it down. But why is she writing it down? Well, it's not like they're gonna. It's not like they're gonna do any math. <laughs> I mean, they're just writing down numbers. Here's the other funny thing. So, I was curious about this TikTok, right? And the main thing I was curious about, and maybe this is just because I used to be a cop and I think about things. All the cars are GM model cars, right? Right. And the guy in the last clip is sitting at a desk, and the window behind him is. In directly into a garage. So what I found out was this TikTok is a GM dealership. So all these people are car salesmen or they work for the car sales, the car company that sells the cars. Okay. Okay. Well, of course, if you're that company, you want your employees to have the cars that they sell. You don't want, you don't want your salesman showing up at a Toyota to sell. Right. Well, on top of that, that's kind of a dirty thing to do to your employees because you get them on the hook for that big of a freaking car payment. They can't go anywhere. That's interesting. You'd think so. Except for the fact that car dealerships that do that, like GM, BMW, even Toyota, uh, Mitsubishi, whatever you want to do it, they have this deal because they're salesmen and they, and they require them. They do these things called car payment reimbursement programs or business vehicle reimbursement. So they're not paying the total amount of that $1,000 car payment. They're paying probably 20% of it, if at all, depending on the dealership. So that 1400 is probably like 300 because the dealership's paying, for, and the beauty of it is the dealership gets a deal through GM, and GM gets to take a huge write-off. Okay, so, so there's... the question is, what was the point in that TikTok video? Because uh, because 
did we see the very, very beginning of it where they kind of like give us the, you know, they frame it where they kind of tell us what the point is. What was the point in this video? Like who? I didn't get the whole video. Purpose. I didn't get the whole video, but my understanding from what I saw of it was the point is, is this is a brag about you could have, you know, one of these really expensive cars as a perk if you work for a car dealership like this. Oh. It's a recruitment video. It's so not, recruitment it's not a, video. it's not a shame they video. sort of whacked off the, the, you know, beginning and ending parts of it that give you the context. Because I was wondering the whole time, what's the context for this thing? I really thought those dollar amounts were insane. They are insane. But I wanted to know the context, like, what, why why was this video even put out? That was what it was. Perfect. And probably the part that's being left out is how much they actually pay of those amounts. That's they right. The total amount, right. for sure. Right. Which is the point yeah. is, is, look at how expensive... These cars, these car payments are that these guys have that they're not paying. So if you work for a car dealership, even though you're making sixty thousand or seventy thousand a year working there, you could still be driving a car that you know somebody making one hundred and fifty could afford. That was a little deal. It's a perk. They're selling the perk of working here. <laughs> Once again, they never do any research, and we always laugh about it because they have. What, the, the company's worth hundreds of millions, Ramsey Solutions that they work for. They've got, they're there on camera. They've got people working the, they've got multiple cameras, right? They've got people working the cameras. They've got producers in the booth. They've got all kinds of people to help them. And nobody can do five minutes worth of research. And yet I can do it here. And you know what our budget is. <laughs> our budget is nothing. <laughs> Sheet, guys. That's this right. In the magical days in the future, if our budget goes up, we will we'll let you know what our budget is. But we're not going to, you know, right now it's nothing. But that's my point is, they don't even know that. <laughs> if she did, if she just spent more more time and energy on the story, if both of them had, than their their nineteen nineties look, like they're auditioning for Friends. <laughs> I mean, it's just, but let's watch them get all worked up about it. Once again, financial experts, you need to listen to them if you want to be rich, even though they have no idea what they're looking at. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So the video is a guy speak. with a phone going through it. It looks like an office. I don't even know where they are asking different people what their car payments are. So they're there on video. It's a car dealership. Oh, it's a car dealership. It's the people that work at the dealership. Uh, oh, so they knew it was a dealership. They should have known this. Oh. These are their cars, James. Y'all, well, I can't speak, speak Rachel. Rachel. Tell not, holy crap. I, can I say that? When I use an example, no when words. I just use an example of a car payment on the show, and I'm like, yeah, you know, a $500 car payment. Like, well, yeah. That feels big. We're talking... We're talking in the thousands. I was prepared to talk about the average car payment, which is like 717. I was prepared to yell at people for 717. <laughs> my my guy has a $1,400. $1,400 oh, $1, for car one. For one car. One car. For one car. Oh, Lord. So that's oh. what's crazy is oh. the... <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Rachel, I'm sorry. <laughs> Give us some vibes, James. Oh, you Lord. got this. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. Rachel, go, Jay. Just go. I, what, what is what is happening? Go. I'll, these I'll people are dumb. This is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. I got Rachel. You are so. <laughs> Look, they're stupid. These people are so stupid. Oh, except for they're not paying these payments. Their car dealerships paying. <laughs> GM <Wait>. paying. <laughs> I'm not even really upset at the personalities. I kind of feel like their researchers, the people who prepared their show notes and whatever, gave them no context. Like, like the people who the people who found these videos and put them in front of them didn't give them 
any real data. So they literally set them up to lose their minds about something rather than give them the whole story. And I, well, but, I know that I think that speaks extremely well for the organization, but I'm, I'm, I'm actually not feeling the need to like, uh, say anything bad about the actual personalities themselves on that one. I'm going to disagree with you on that. And, and here's why. Okay. Sure. Hit me with it. If, if I give you a sound sheet and it's a clip and I haven't researched it or something, I mean, you watch it and you flip out about it and I've given you no context and you sound like an idiot. It's not my fault. You should have fucking double checked. If you're going to get up there and say something, you need to make sure that what you're saying is true. You can't blame your assistant. But we should delete most of our videos because I'm no, I know, but watching them totally blindly. Well, no, but we explain that you're watching them blind. No, oh, yeah, I say that. I don't pretend that I've seen it before. I, I literally say I. No, but I also know. But thing. but I also give the sound sheets, and I show you that I have context, and I know yeah, what yeah. what we're looking at and why. I'm not just blindly throwing shit out there. I mean, a couple times we've done that, but that's that's more of stuff that we know we don't okay, have to. I'm just being very honest that that. Sometimes I've seen these, but many times I haven't seen them. No, but I'm, I'm just saying the bottom line is you don't have to worry about it because we have context beforehand. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And you do get a sound sheet, and I do give you notes with context. So it's not like, you know, it's not like you can sit there and go, well, it's total dipshit. I mean, but even if I gave you something that was out of context, you can't sit there and bitch at me later because it's like, well, Lacey, I'm sorry. You know, maybe I made a mistake, but you're the one who fucking said it. Right. It's the whole thing. It's the uh, Osama bin Laden thing. He didn't know that 9-11 was going to happen, but it's still his fucking fault. <laughs> I do completely hear your argument. I, I'm also going to say for the, a show that large and an organization that large where you have like a whole team of people that's sort of doing the content writing and creation and all of that whatnot... I don't know. I mean, I don't know when they get show notes, if they get show notes, but like, I, I hope they got context. I guess I can't know for sure that they did it, but it sure didn't seem like they were aware of it. I know? don't think they ever do. I don't think that that's a priority. I think it's more about sending the Correct. message because I don't think their audience is going to double check this and they don't trust their audience. Yeah. Right. Um, I think they literally, this is once again, it's literally the con. It's the Listen to me and things will be better over here. They just want the headline. They don't want the context, right? Because the context makes it too nuanced and then their whole scam goes out the window, right? Because if we look at the actual context here, the context is these people aren't paying that for the most part. And so their whole reaction is, is nothing. But that's not good television. It's better television if the world's about to blow up, right? You don't want the average American to be thinking about things in context and nuance and, and making wise decisions. No, you want the average American glued to their TV, buying your products because they're scared shitless the world's going to end before the next commercial break. <laughs> that's, that's the con. It's better over here. Come over here. But if you don't pay attention to me the whole time... You're going to fuck it all up. Constant, 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 right? It's the game. It's, it's, it's just a game. And like I said, we're talking about two people that claim to be financial experts, never studied finance, no background in finance, other than doing this, if you can call that a background in finance, right? And they're telling you, we have the answers to become rich. You just need to pay attention to us and buy our shit, right? Versus me who's worked in finance for 10 years, executive certificate of financial planning, master's of science and finance. You've been a financial coach for years and years and years. You work in banking, you've done accounting, right? Mm, right. We worked with a lot of individual clients, lots of experience. We don't have the budget and the money they do, but you can sit there and say, well, you guys are idiots. I'm like, well, yeah, maybe, but we're not liars. <laughs> And we actually read the fucking articles and we double check the source. Goes back to our Sesame Street. One of these things is not like the other. One of these things just doesn't belong. 
<laughs> All right, let's dive back into uh, <laughs> to this Friends episode. God, these outfits are ridiculous. <laughs> and, and you need to pray for me right now because this is, it, this is, I've lost my words. It's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. 13, 14, 1200 on cars on one vehicle. You are stealing. You are robbing from your future. You're robbing. Except for you're not paying it. <laughs> the company's paying for it. Think you're robbing yourself. I said it. I said it before the break. I said, Rachel, the car payment. That is the thing. Yeah. That is yeah. the gap that keeps the middle class from becoming and building wealth. Because if you invested that car payment, oh. what it would be? Oh, what I mean, it would be? If I, I was prepared, like I said, I was prepared to talk about the average car payment, seven hundred seventeen dollars right. for one person. And if you invested that money just over thirty years at a, a you know ten percent rate, that's over one point four million dollars. Yeah, one point four million. <laughs> oh, what I do this. this is the other, the other little trick. So once again, they're not going to do the math. We could have done the math. I could do the math now if we wanted. She said the seventeen hundred and seventeen. Okay, if you invest it just thirty years, just thirty years, Lacey, just thirty years, right? Just you know, more than uh, two thirds of your life, <laughs> closer to three fourths, <laughs> just just that amount of time. <laughs> if you just invest it that that long, right? Um, then you could have one point four million dollars. Granted, you'll be in your 60s or 70s by the time you get it, right? And even then, that 1.4 million in today's dollars, right, when equivalent to today's dollars is not as much money. It's not 1.4 million today. It's 1.4 million 30 years from now, right? Now, I can even do that one real quick. So we want to do 1.4 million in the future. And we'll do inflation. That would be 450,000, 58,000 a day, something like that. Right? So not quite as much money as they're advertising it to be. Right? So this whole thing is just a fucking game. It's a shell game at the end of the day. Right? So, oh, well, see, if you just listen to us, that could be $1.4 million. And you're sitting there thinking, ooh, $1.4 million, that's a lot of money. Yeah, but in the future, that's not going to be worth 1.4. It's going to be worth about 458. And that's if you're getting your 10% interest, which if you look at the track record of the market of the last 30 years, it's only been eight on average. And in the last 20, it's only been seven. Yeah. It could be less if you're not somebody who is really paying that much attention to those investments. And I'm not trying to throw people under the bus, but people just sort of set it, forget it, and literally don't go back and look at it. So they might not actually be, you know, I'm optimistic and I like that 10% number, but like my 10, your eight, whatever, if they're setting it, forgetting it, not looking at it again, they might not be getting even anywhere close to either of them. You it's, know? it's why when I do market projections, I just use six. Because if I'm wrong, I'm wrong on the on the downside, not on the upside. So I'm not yeah. over promising shit. Right. You know, um, this has been my my whole motto as a businessman is is under promise and over deliver. Right. <laughs> that way, everybody's happier, right? <laughs> right. When they get ten, they're thrilled, as opposed to they get eight and they're ticked off. Right. Right. That's that's just the general rule. But I still love it. They're financial experts. Give them your money. Buy their products. Buy their advertising shit. Buy their apps. Buy their books. They know what they're talking about. But they what don't I even know, know what they were looking at. What I want to know, and I know we're not going to learn that in this segment, <laughs> but going back to what I said before, you know, whomever you choose to work with, whether it's a coach or you know, an accountant or a financial planner, et cetera, you want somebody that is a little further along than you are and can teach you things you don't know yet. Sure. And I just can't help but wonder if either of those experts are further along 
than the people they're trying to teach. Well, in the sense that they've been given more money in their lives, yeah. But in the sense that they've earned it or got there, I, I doubt it. I especially know that's true like, with Rachel. More skill-wise in terms of knowing what literally to do, like from experiencing doing it. Oh, they have, not, like I said, these none, none of these, that's the thing about all the people at Dave Ramsey, none of them have any real experience. Right. You know, um, and even Dave, what, he, he did his uh, real estate finance degree, whatever, whatever he claims it is. Even if he, he did the finance degree at the University of Tennessee, and I don't know that there was one when he was there in the 80s, right? But um, I was curious about it because most finance degrees don't include personal finance. It's corporate finance. It's business finance. And right. even the even the university... Lost completely in there. Right. And even the University of Tennessee today and their finance program, their business finance program for a bachelor's degree, there's one class that they offer that covers personal finance and it's not personal finance, it's insurance. So Dave Ramsey said they're going, I'm an expert in personal finance. From where? Where did you learn it? No, he's a guy who had a friend and he fell ass backwards into a radio show. And then he just used the, the insurance company's program forever. And then he just sort of rewrote it and claimed it as his own. That's all that's happened here. There's no expertise. There's no advancement. But the bottom line is I'm rich, right? Look at how good I look and all my stuff. If you want to be like me and come to the grass is greener side, you need to buy all my shit and listen to everything I say and pay attention to everything I say. Right? And if you do that, one day you'll be rich. I mean, just, just 30 years from now, just 30 years, just 30 years, not that long, just 30, just most of your, your adult life, just gone. No, but if you do that, you'll be rich. But then the beauty is, is that with that con, right, is they're making money. That's how they make their money is by you giving them your money so they can teach you how to become rich like them. When that's not how they're becoming rich, they're becoming rich by conning you and giving them their money. And then the other side of the coin, which is so funny to me, is if it doesn't work, right? If I give the advice and it doesn't work, then, well, it's your fault because you were stupid. You're one of those Gen Zers who didn't save enough. You spent too much money in your car. You're an idiot. It's not my fault. My plan was genius. You just fucked it up. Right? It's, I mean, it's bulletproof if you're an idiot and you, and you listen to this shit. And once again, these people are telling you we're financial experts. We know what we're talking about. The first clip, they didn't even read the article <laughs> that they were talking about. They just read the headline and we had to make fun of them for that. And this one, oh, we're watching a TikTok video. They don't even know the context of the video. They're bitching at these people for having high car payments when these people aren't paying them. Their, their employers are. It's a perk, which was the whole point of the video. I mean, yeah, I mean, we do this so many times we've done this, and I keep feeling like we get criticisms and stuff from people. It's like, that's the game. It's very, very simple. They don't know what they're talking about. They're just selling you shit. <laughs> And it is shit. It's not even good stuff. <laughs> you know, 